Hi folks, seems a bit cooler this morning. Oh, it was really sweltering hot yesterday and days, days before, so I, so I said uh, I'd take a chance if you do oils because they behave rather badly when I did this one in the heat last week. I just couldn't spread the uh, or blend the paint on the sky, but you seem to like it. Uh, it wasn't all I had in mind. Uh, right, okay. Um, I've just put a horizon across here, uh, a bar or barn. Uh, maybe we can sort of have a bit, bit more to that. Uh, just a couple of barns. Uh, <coughs> I like the, uh, the trees I did in, uh, with the, using the Payne's Grey and the Ultramarine. But anyway, let's uh, start by uh, wetting the whole paper. I'm going to concentrate everything, like in the borders that, that I drew on the other ones. Take about an inch off each side, or a bit more than that. So it, it uh, looks good in the double mount that I've got. So that's, uh, was built for a smaller, well, made for a smaller painting than 15 by 11. Okay, now this paper is annoying me. Uh, it keeps spitting, but this one keeps shedding hairs. Okay, we'll put in a coat of, uh, or a wash of raw sienna, a bit of, bit of alizarin. And then we'll put in a bit of, bit of, bit of blue. Now most of my colours here are not, not crumbs of, that's even worse, that's really shedding hairs. I'll have to go in the Hake graveyard I'm afraid. They don't last forever, but you can bring them, them back together by just wetting them in water or a wash. Maybe if I put a bit of a pond in there. Right, a bit of a... bit of the red. Now this all dries lighter than when you put it on first. Now this will expand, so I'm just waiting for it to uh, go into that. Uh, uh, right, I'm going to dry that, so take your headphones off folks, or mute your sound and wind forward through this bit. It saves me editing. And with this paper, it holds a lot of uh, water. It's uh, it's Saunders Waterford 90 pound cold press paper, wonderful stuff.
sorry about that. I think uh, that uh, the paper feels dry, but I bet it holds a lot of. It's hold, still got a lot of moisture in it. Just, just pull it tight. Right. Uh, okay. So I want to do the house, the, the buildings in uh, the Payne's Grey. Just using an inch flat. Mm, see, this is soaking quite nicely. Right, that'll do. Uh, once you put a bit of, bit of dark, uh, shadows darker on the walls. Okay, so we'll let that go. Okay, so get my my medium hake now. Oh, but I'm going to use sort of Frank Clark's little little hake. It's a three quarter inch hake, I think. Uh, I don't know what's happened to Frank. Okay, we'll uh, get some uh, wintry trees. Lovely little brushes. I haven't used the large mop cape because I prefer the uh, the Royal Ransom brushes. But this one is a lovely little, little uh, gem. So it's a bit, a bit more texture in there. Oh, I'll go back over to the other side, there's more.
Right. Uh, I'll get a sort of an off-white uh, bit in here. Going up here a bit there. Okay, let's get the little hake again. I want to put some bit of strength in that, uh, the base of those trees you now, so a bit burnt sienna. This gorgeous uh, yellow, this uh, ye cadmium yellow light, sold by uh, by Jackson's Art. I'm not too worried about um, colours. It's a texture that I'm after. Just gives it another plane. All right, let's do some more the other side. You don't want the brush too dry. Okay, I'll do. Right, here we go with the with a bit of a green. Uh paint's grey. Some rough ground in. So I want to put a pond in it here.
I'll go too low on this because the mount is, uh, the aperture of the mount is quite a lot smaller. We just stiffen up this in here. A little more green now. Like that. Bit of perfection, bit of hard stuff here. No, let's just put a bit of detail in the uh, detail, I don't like that word. Um, just put in some dark here. This paper is very dry. Uh -huh. I've got my little, my little hake now. Try to reduce it. Call this texturing. Let me put while well, that's drying on, let's put a uh, bird or two in. Just, just a bit of dark. Birds are lovely to put in like this. Very easy. Saves doing portraits.
screw. I'll sign it. Always sign your work. Now, there's uh, no detail in that, it's all just suggestions. Uh, right, put that on and we've got the mount. Cool, could we do with some rain? My word, our garden is parched. The grass is gone. They'll come back, no doubt, but it's, uh, it looks horrible. Uh, right, so it's the mounts. There we are, just a couple, just some, some barns, some foreground, a bit of refraction. That's why I paint, I paint, if I'm going to put water in, when I do the blue in the sky, I always do it down the bottom where I'm going to put a pond or something. Uh, that's a bit wet, I could uh, put in some, some uh, little uh, fence posts, but. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I might be able to scrape them out with this. Oops. Oh, that'll do. No more than that. Thanks for watching folks, uh, I'll get this uploaded and then make myself a cup of tea and come back and see what I've, I've got. I've got a board prepared. I was asked by A.T. about uh, some particular Strathmore paper, I've, I've got no, I've never used it, um, but it was, I think it was more about uh, primary the paper for oils. And of course you, you can paint in oils on, on watercolour paper, but it's safer to give it a couple of coats of, of gesso or dilute P, PVA glue to seal the surface. Uh, I think the, the, the problem being is that the acid, if there's any acid in the paper, it'll eventually uh, cut into the, the surface oil paint and ruin it, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I do it now because it's probably be good practice that, uh, to put the, uh, to, to prime. Well, the best, best if you want to do oil paint, you can get, get some a thin MDF, three millimetre MDF and cut it to size. It's a safer bet. I do use um, the, uh, Fabriano 130 pound studio paper. But it doesn't bleed like that. that. That's a beautiful effect, and that's because of the way the paper reacts with the paints and the water. Uh, I, I love my skies. I, I really do. You don't need to do much more than that. You can do what you like, but if you want to paint a nice, good, cloudy sky with white clouds, dob it out, that's, that's fine. But this is what I do. And I do paint paints on uh, paper, uh, but another thing, uh, acrylic is its own primer, as far as I can see. So you don't need to put any previous primer on your paper. You can go straight onto the paper, but it will soak up, soak the, the um, acrylic out of the paper, uh, out of the paint. But once you've got a surface on it, it's waterproof. So I wouldn't think there's much that could happen to it. Unless it's attached from the back, I don't know. So I'll have to be honest and say, uh, in my experience, I've not had any problems with it. I like paper, painting on paper, especially on, on failed or, or watercolours that I don't really like. And there are plenty of those. Uh, so uh, I'll call this uh, Barnes, uh, Black Barnes. Uh, but the, they can be painted black, or I'm using paints grey, but uh, 
but it, it, that creosote could preserve us, it would preserve her. Uh, would go on these these barns. They can be red roofed, but I tend to prefer tiles, uh, slates. Sorry, slates. Anyway, hope you like it. See you soon. Bye bye.